man, I wasn't recording again. All right, we're recording now, so people are going to have to miss out on that first part. But yeah, basically we're talking about, for people tuning into the recording, um, what you have to ask yourself to so you stay motivated. So staying motivated is what we're talking about now. So will eating crap or skipping your workout help you reach your goal? The answer is no. Obviously, if you're not feeling good, if you're, um, if you're tired or you're sick, some days you may want to skip a workout. Um, sometimes, for whatever the reason, it could be traveling, it could be three in the morning, all that's open is McDonald's. What are you going to do? You know, are you going to starve until morning or are you going to eat something? Sometimes it's going to happen. The question is, are, is that going to compound and continue? But oftentimes, that's not going to be the case. There are rare circumstances, but that's not going to be the case. So will eating crap or skipping your workout help you reach your goal? Answer is no. Next up, it's how will your motivators feel? And I mentioned this before. If they saw you sabotaging yourself. So like I said, a lot of you are parents or grandparents. Um, think about, like, let's say your kids are your motivation. I don't know if that's true or not. I'm just riffing here. If your kids are your motivation and they know everything you know, so they know how you should be eating, they know you should be exercising, how are they going to feel if you're saying, okay, this is what I'm doing. I'm eating clean. I'm exercising regularly. And then on a perfectly nice day where you have the time allotted, you have all the food prepared, you decide, ah, we're going to order pizza and stay in and watch a movie. It's, it's not a good look. So those are two questions I ask myself all the time if I really feel like I'm about to go off track. And they often do wake me up. So Michelle, I mentioned this before, but again, so Michelle's been sick lately, um, pretty sick. She had bronchitis. So um, doctors put her on steroids. And, you know, she wrote all this in the group. So that's why that's the only reason I'm sharing it. But she was told by her doctor and nurse that she's going to gain weight. And usually when you're on steroids and you're sick and you're not exercising and often you're eating crap, you do gain weight. It's inevitable. But um, even though she was nervous, she ate brilliantly during this time. And she lost a pound each of the last two weeks despite being on steroids, despite not being able to exercise, and despite being sick. So clearly it can be done. Um, obviously, diet's not the only thing, but it's a crucial factor. But she asked herself a question. Was she eating out of habit or eating out of hunger? So we've all been taught we need to eat breakfast, lunch, dinner with uh, some you know, snacks, maybe two snacks in between, and we need to eat every few hours to keep our metabolisms going. And that's actually not true. One of the things that I laid out in the food guide that I sent to you guys is that you need to eat when you're hungry. So Eat out, don't eat out of habit. I don't care if you've eaten at 12 p.m. every day for the last 30 years. It doesn't matter. Um, if you're not hungry at 12 p.m., there's no reason to eat. If you're not hungry for breakfast, there's no reason to eat. Eat when you're hungry. There's a reason we get hungry and then we're not hungry. Our bodies tell us when. So it's important to distinguish the two. And the fact that she was able to do that while she was sick is pretty cool. But um, yeah, if you, if you apply that, that's really going to help out. So... I mentioned earlier that if you continue to have good success, you're going to have to change your motivation. So especially if it's like me and you're using kind of negative affirmations to push you because I had exceeded my expectations. I lost 100 pounds. I set out to lose 70. I lost an additional 30 on top of that um, just because I found I had a food allergy and I eliminated dairy from my diet and there it went. But um, you need to find different motivations. So ultimately, you're going to have to shift it from your kids or grandkids to you because it's really easy once you reach a goal, even if it took you a while, to become complacent. It took me six years to lose the weight and to get into the shape that I got into. But it only took six months before uh, I was like, I don't really have a motivation anymore. I, I look better than the people I wanted to look better than. And you know, this is what I'm doing for a living. I know everything I need to know. What's my motivation? And I had to kind of have a talk with myself when I gained some weight back at the end of last year from my birthday through to Thanksgiving and just tell myself, look, this is, this is, my, this is what I do for a living. And I'm, I'm not going to be able to serve my clients best if I'm not at my best. I know what to do and I need to be the best example of that. So since then, I've been very good on the straight and narrow. If I have a bad beverage or a bad meal, it stops there. It doesn't compound into a weekend or a series of weeks. 
I stop it there. I'm good for like the next week at the very least. And I really nip it in the bud. So ultimately you got to shift your motivation from something external to internal, something to just doing it for yourself. So I just said that. So the second thing that people asked about today is how to approach cheating. So this is big. So for a lot of people, I have a lot of clients and have had a lot of clients over the years who they have a bad meal and all of a sudden one day becomes a week, becomes a month and they're completely off track. Um, so Monica asked about this earlier. So, um, so first part of it is eating a peach or some grapes. I'll get into that in a second. Um, and you want to know how to not let these things set you back. Um, Rita also, you had a, you had a similar question or, or similar reach out. You wanted to understand what this was all about. So first off, in terms of peaches, grapes, I'd rather you eat that than a candy bar or a tub of ice cream or something like that. If you can eat a natural food, even if it's high in sugar and you're craving sugar, go to that over the tub of ice cream any day of the week. That, that's perfectly fine. I don't do it all the time, but we all get our cravings. And I'm going to give you some examples of what I turn to when I'm craving something sugary, salty, whatever. So sugar, usually an apple or an orange, at least for me, I don't know about you guys, but for me, an apple or an orange, which are both low glycemic fruits, they really work for me. I'll have one and I'm good. Then my sugar craving is gone. I don't have to worry about it. And because those are both very fibrous fruits as well, your net carb ratio is very, very low. Also, I talked about Quest Bars on our last call, and I love the cookies and cream flavor. You can actually put it in the microwave and it melts, and it's almost like eating a cookie. Um, so that's another thing that I do, and those are the three main go-tos I go to when I'm struggling and I really want sugar, and that usually satisfies me. If you tend to want things that are salty, I actually will just have a handful or two of organic raw nuts or seeds. So I like Brazil nuts. So I'll literally have a handful of those. And even though they're not salty, I guess for whatever the reason, usually you have something roasted and salty. So that it's fatty as well. The nuts are still fatty. They're a healthy fat. So you eat a handful of nuts and usually your salt, um, your salt craving is going to dissipate immensely. And then grains, we went over this a lot on the last call. But just to reiterate, there are a lot of healthy replacements. So I have that bread recipe in the recipe book. But if you want pasta, and for a lot of people, that's really what they want. You can have spaghetti or zucchini squash. There's that Pasta Zero brand. I think Nasoya is the name of the brand that actually makes it. And Quest Bars, are good. I love Quest Bars. I actually get like three boxes delivered every month. And those are like a saving grace. They're not the best for you, but in comparison to eating something that's incredibly processed, sugary, salty, or grainy, much, much better. So and something to keep in mind is if you cheat, you do not fail. So, and I, my dad taught me this growing up a lot. You know, I, you know, I play softball a lot now, but to be completely transparent, I didn't start playing till I was 12 and I couldn't make the high school baseball team to save my life until I was a senior. And I had to work really hard. I'm not a natural athlete. But you all, I just kept repeating in my mind because he would say this to me every time I get discouraged. You only fail when you throw in the towel and you give up. So just because you had a bad day, you gave in, you were lazy, you were complacent, whatever the case may be, that doesn't mean that your weight loss program is completely derailed. It's just one bad day, whatever. Shake it off. We all make mistakes. We all sabotage ourselves. It's not the end of the world. We're human after all. But you're not done until you literally say, you know what, screw this. I'm just going to go back to eating the way I was. I'm going to go back to not moving at all. And I'm just going to let things unravel and let what happened happen. Once you let the fates decide, then you're, you're really going to be in a bad place. But do not let this take you off the path. This is one mess up. That's it. So do not let one bad meal a couple of beers, whatever, take you out of commission. So like I said, just get back on the horse next time you eat, next time you drink something, and let that bygones be bygones. So if you must cheat, so I mentioned there will be situations, not often, but once in a while, where you're going to want to cheat, and that's just inevitable. So if you must cheat, well, you really must, but if you really decide to, minimize your portion consumed. So 
for me, I used to go to town all the time on, you know, P, you know, on the weekends, I would immediately have friends over, we'd have a couple of 24 packs of beer and we'd have pizza and wings and all this stuff. And I would eat at least half of it and drink at least half of it. I used to have a problem and, uh, it was, uh, it was not good. So now when I do eat pizza, I have a couple slices. That's it. That's the end of it. If I have a couple of beers, that's a couple of beers. I don't have the eight to 10 that I used to drink when I was in college or when I was younger. There's no point. So it's the same thing on your end. If you know you're going to be bad for whatever the reason, just minimize it. Don't let it become something that's going to continue to cascade because a lot of these things, sugar, grains, salt, they're incredibly addictive. If you ingest them regularly, you're going to want them more regularly. If you ingest them in big quantities, once your body recovers from it, you're going to want more and more, and you have to wean yourself off those foods again. So really minimize it so that the damage is negligible in comparison to what it may have been in the past. So Jessica posed a question here, an additional question. And Jessica, I, I see you here. I'm going to unmute you. Oh. Okay. Um, so your question was about watching portions, counting calories if you cut out carbs and sugar, so you're noticing you're not as hungry? Uh, yes, um, way less hungry. You know, usually at work, I'm always looking for something to eat. I was going to bring multiple snacks. Now I'm bringing them, and I feel as if I don't even need to eat them. Mm -hmm. uh, when I get home from work, I used to be so hungry. Oh, it's showing my feet, my mom saying. Okay, in there. <laughs> All right. Um, so... I don't know. I just feel less hungry and I don't know if I'm eating too, too, like on, I don't you know if I'm eating too little. Mm -hmm. I, uh, um, on the, what is it? My fitness pal, you have the set calories and I'm, I'm not meeting those calories. I don't know if I'm entering it wrong or, mm -hmm. or what I'm just, yeah. don't know if I'm eating enough. <laughs> it could be a couple of things. Uh, sometimes, yeah, it's hard to enter something accurately because if it, unless it has a label on it, like, Fruits of, and vegetables and things like that of all different sizes can be double or triple the calories that the one you found is. So right. that, that, that's one thing. You know, secondarily, I'm, I'm not a big fan of counting calories. Um, generally speaking, um, do you know how much you're eating usually on average? Do you remember off the top of your head? Like calorie wise? Mm-hmm. Um, it's saying, I mean, like 1,200 calories, which okay. I feel like I'm eating more. I'm not... Because I'm not hungry, so I'm not, I'm not going to eat more if I'm not hungry. Mm. Yeah, no, I understand. Yeah. Um, that's, but I feel like that's so little. 1,200 is, 1200 is usually the bare minimum that they say people want to have. Yeah. That being said, though, I, you know, even for myself, there are days where I eat as little as 1,400, and then there are days where I'll eat close to 5,000. For me, it, it fluctuates radically, like radically. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's not the case for most people, but when you eat better quality food, whether they're higher in fiber, whether you're having some healthy fats that maybe you weren't having before, that's going to fill you up for longer. And that's very common. So as long as you don't feel like you have low energy, that you're not thinking. No, I clearly. feel like I have more energy. That's right. the thing. So I don't know if maybe I'm just not entering them correctly. Like you said, not finding the right amounts or it's, it's I, possible. I'm, I'm basically saying I'm eating chicken. Yeah. It's four ounces. I don't know how much it is. Yeah. I, I don't you know. Yeah, I don't, I don't weigh everything myself and, and figure all that out you know, unless it has a barcode. Like I said, like the Quest bars, you just scan in. But um, yeah, I, I wouldn't worry too much about it. If you have more energy, if you're feeling good um, and you're eating the right foods, which is, it looks like you're doing based upon you know, the nutritional check-ins, then I don't see why you should, why you should worry. Um, if you were eating like 600 a day or something like that, no, no. yeah, then, then, then we'd I'm have a bit of a lunch and dinner. I'm having <clears throat> fruits and you know, nuts. So mm -hmm. good. But, yeah. So yeah. So yeah, I think you're good. So, so guys, just, just uh, generally speaking for this question, cause I know before you came on, Jessica, a lot of people were like, that was a good question and, and we want to get the answer as well. Um, if you're cutting out carbs and sugar, you're eating healthy fats, you're eating more fibrous foods, you're not going to be as hungry. You're not going to want to eat as often as you used to. That's not a bad thing. I'll give you an example for myself too. I eat two meals a day. I don't eat three meals. I eat two meals. I have breakfast and I have dinner. I usually have like a mid-afternoon snack, but usually it's nothing more than a handful or two of nuts or an apple. 
that's it. That's all I eat during the day. And it's just because I'm hungry in the mornings when I wake up, so I need to eat. I'm not hungry really until three or four o'clock, but I'm not going to eat a giant meal then. So I just have a snack. And then at around seven or eight, I'll have my dinner and that's it. And that's worked really well for me. And uh, yeah, if you're feeling the same way and you don't need to bring as much food to work with you, that's probably better Then you can save it at home and you don't have to do as much shopping next time around. Okay, so, good. all right, you. good. Does that answer your question? Yes, thank you. All right, cool. <clears throat> all right, so any other questions? So I'm going to do a little roll call now. So I'm just going to go down the line here. So Sheila, number one on the list here. So um, <laughs> did you have any questions? Maybe something I didn't explain well or something that came to mind while we were going over everything? No, I think that I think an eye opener for me is just that eat when hungry. I think sometimes I tend to do more of, oh, it's breakfast. Oh, it's lunchtime. Oh, it's mm -hmm. dinner. And so um, I think uh, that helps me with my mindset. So, right. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And uh, I'll actually um, have Michelle talk about this. So let me find her here. There we are. Hey, Michelle, you still there? I'm here. All right, so um, Michelle and I work together privately too, so I just saw her like an hour ago. But uh, Michelle, tell them what you were telling me just about, because you were sick, I explained it a little bit, but you said that was a hard you know, distinction you had to make before. It was uh, very difficult for me because um, I feel like my whole life, breakfast was seven, lunch is 12, dinner is five. I'm programmed that way, that's what I do. Mm -hmm. So when I was trying to tap into my feelings, I wasn't really sure if I was hungry or if it was habit. Mm -hmm. So it was difficult to know if I was really feeling it. So I would drink a lot of water to see if it held me over and if I wasn't hungry. And then if I was hungry, I ate. I just picked a healthier snack. I use uh, cashews, but I have to be careful with cashews because I love them. So mm -hmm. it's yeah, easy for me to go over with them. Mm-hmm. But it is very difficult, and to be in tune with yourself and not lie to yourself and just go with the habit is difficult. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah, so we've all been programmed that way, guys. I mean, I was too. I, I ate right when I get up. I still do, but that's only because I'm hungry, not necessarily because I feel some obligation to the breakfast gods to do that. Um, same, with uh, same with lunch and dinner. I don't eat lunch anymore, and you guys will find it's going to be different for all of you. We're all different, but... Um, yeah, it's finding out what works for you guys. So Michelle, thanks for sharing that. Um, did you have a question, Michelle? And then go back down the line here. And so we're not going to have water tomorrow morning? Hey, Michelle, you there? Okay. I think we lost her for a second. All right. Let's, uh, let's go back here. So Lisa, um, were there any questions, anything that came to mind while we were going over the mindset stuff and then answering Jessica's question? No, just I think really for me right now, it's deprogramming, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, right. trying to realize, okay, you know, you don't have, you don't have to feel guilty for eating. Like when I confessed to you, I had fish with butter, mm -hmm. you know, I felt so guilty about the butter because I'm so used to thinking, you know, yeah, butter fat is, is bad, bad. Right. Fat content, you know, and even though I felt that I really did make a good choice. And portion was fine and everything. I was content. I didn't feel like I, I wanted dessert or anything. You know, it's just reprogramming. That's all I can say it is for me right now. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. And it takes a little bit of time. But yeah, keeping these things in mind, like everybody so far we've spoken has mentioned, is, is going to be key. So knowing that you don't have to eat on a regimented schedule, eat when you're hungry, don't be afraid of dietary fat unless it's a trans fat. It, you'll survive. It, it's actually quite good for you. And uh, you want to stay away from the processed, you know, sugars, grains, and things like that. Okay. So let's move on to Rita. I'm unmuting you now. Okay, Rita. Um, any, anything popped to mind while we were um, going over anything? Any questions you had? Well, I think right now the hardest thing is, you know, like, I have a pretty big family, so we get together a lot. Of course, mm. eating's always involved. Mm -hmm. And, like, I'm not always hungry when they're ready to have dinner or when we're going out to eat. So that mm. that's probably my biggest thing is that everybody's going out to eat. So do you sit there and not eat, <laughs> you know, or do you just, like, 
I guess I just need to plan a little better and not eat lunch or something. I don't know. Yeah. So you, you don't really have to plan, which I think is good. I think, you know, if you don't want to feel like the black sheep of the family, um, get something small, have a small plate, have something on your plate. You don't even have to eat it all. But it's almost like for a lot of people, if they have a, a crowd, whether it's their family or friends who drink a lot and they don't want to drink, they'll, you know, get a, a seltzer at the bar and pretend it's a vodka soda or something. And, you know, they'll, they'll just pretend that they're drinking. Um, I think it's kind of the same concept. If you're not hungry, you don't feel pressured by them or anyone to eat. I mean, it's, it, this is your life. This is your body. And if your body's not hungry, you don't have to feed it. But, you know, they keep up appearances. If you're out at a restaurant or it's a big get together, you put some things on your plate, some small, healthy things, and you can, you can munch on it here and there. But don't ever force yourself to eat a meal or something like that if you really don't feel the need to eat at that point. Yeah, good point. Yeah. Did you have any other questions or? Um, I know you've talked a little bit about people not feeling well. Mm -hmm. The other day, for instance, I got up and stomach was just upset. And so I did eat carbs. That tends to settle your stomach a little mm -hmm. better than proteins. Sure. You know, I mean, I was just like, all right, I know I'm not supposed to do this, but mm -hmm. that's the only thing that sounds like I, and I was, sure. you know, a little hungry. So it was like, I need something, but mm -hmm. so I guess, is that okay? <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, <laughs> if, if your stomach's bothering you quite a bit and that's really, and that's really the only thing that you can keep down. I mean, I guess it's, it's better to eat something than nothing. You definitely don't want to starve, especially when you're hungry. Um, but I guess it depends on the illness too. Um, did you have like a stomach bug that day or? No, I, I mean, I literally just got up with an upset stomach. Um, oh, okay. and then after, you know, I did, I actually, um, it's, uh, like an English muffin mm -hmm. with some butter and it settled down and I felt better. So, you know, I did okay the rest of the day, but yeah, yeah. Yeah. And in, in those cases, that's a good question. In those cases, if you have an upset stomach, and obviously, like you said, if you're eating some, you know, a higher fat or higher protein, it's not really going to settle your stomach. Some vegetables might. Like now I get this insane craving to eat like a salad when my stomach bothers me. It's really strange. Um, mm -hmm. That might be something to consider in the future. But yeah, if, if you don't have that on hand, you're really feeling crappy. Um, that's not the end of the world. And like you said, you ate well the rest of the day and that's exactly what we're doing right now. We're following, you know, an 80, 20 principle. We're not going to be perfect. We will have slip ups, but at the end of the day, um, if you're making good choices, 80 or more percent of the time, you're still going to see results. So I think you handled it well. And, uh, maybe next time, I guess the only tweak I would make is maybe have some greens, you know, some salad on hand, see if that helps. Um, and if okay. not, you can just turn back to the muffin and you'll be all right. All right. All right. Cool. That's all I had. Thanks. All right. No problem. And then Monica, um, any questions, anything that popped up while we were going over everything? I like what Rita said, cause that's exactly what happened to me this week. I, you know, I got injured last weekend and, and this week has just been so bad. And I did the same thing. I had the same question about, like, I did saltines. I'm like, I've got to have some crackers or something. Mm -hmm. and, like, six saltines or, you know. And then, but then I felt bad. And then I thought, well, shoot, that can't be the worst. And then I ate great the rest of the day. So, I, that's what my, where my question came from was, mm -hmm. you know, if I do that, I want to try to make choices that are the worst, that, that are the least harmful to me. <laughs> Right. Exactly. So yeah, exactly. So, you know, you mentioned, you know, peaches and grapes in there. So yeah. like I said earlier, if you're, if it's that or an ice cream, I'd have well, the, I, yeah. Um, the question I have is just, and this might be a little bit off topic, but how do you feel about all these recipes? Like I found the recipe today for this, this, um, pizza that was a below keto pizza. And then I, I have mixed feelings on using that stuff because like there's a, now there's like a dessert, there's a dessert cookbook with no carbs and sugar and mm -hmm. I have mixed feelings about that. Cause like, we're trying to get our mindset in eating healthy, but then like, okay, well then I have this pizza. I can make this pizza, but then mm -hmm. I, can this will be it. So how do you feel about that? And as far as does that mess? Cause I think that kind of messes with my mindset a little bit if I start doing that. 
Yeah, I, I think it's different for everyone. So, so for you, obviously, it may not be something you want to entertain because you might next time you see, you know, I guess whatever you would call a real pizza or a typical pizza, let's say, you might be more apt to eat it. But I know for a lot of people, like they want to find a way to have their cake and eat it too. Yeah. Um, and that, that, I think that's actually the tagline I have in my recipe book. So um, for some people and, and myself included, I, I'm actually the complete opposite. If I feel like I can have pizza without the negative effects, then I'll oh, prepare it. I'm yeah. so happy because I always felt like, like they, uh, uh, like some other people said is we're so trying to get out of this stuff that we've been taught all these years. And mm. I was out of that. Like I want to be able to sustain it. And I think that's what my problem is, is that, you just like you said, you try to sustain it, and then all of a sudden, well, let me just eat regular cookies. Why not? Right, and I think what's going to happen too, even if you right now you make like let's say I have a cauliflower pizza recipe in the recipe book and a few other things. If you eat um, those right now, you'll find that let's say if you crave grains or you crave bread, pasta, pizza, whatever, in the future you don't crave it. Like I used to, like one of my downfalls was Dunkin' Donuts. I love Dunkin' Donuts, like vanilla frosted, Boston cream. I would get like a, one of those like 12 packs. And I used to eat it all in one sitting. And I used to not be able to go in without getting a donut. I get a coffee and I get at least a donut. Now um, I can go into a Dunkin' Donuts or any donut place and I can just get a coffee and, and walk out without any issue um, because those cravings do go away. The longer you go without eating that stuff, the um, easier it is to say no to it too. So I think in the beginning, it might be a good kind of transitional thing to use. So, okay, instead of eating pizza from the place down the street, I'm going to make this cauliflower pizza. But maybe in a month, you don't even think about pizza. You don't even think about bread because you haven't had the real or typical thing in so long. So, um, yeah, I, I think for so, like, you, uh, like you said, though, it's, it's different mindsets and different ways to look at it. Um, but yeah, it's entirely up to you. If, if you feel that it might make you more susceptible, then I definitely wouldn't recommend uh, doing it. Um, but if you feel like it'll help you transition from not eating it ever again, or not, maybe not ever again, but not eating it for a long, long time, then um, it might be better to just stick yeah, to healthier. I love the idea of being able to make stuff that's, that's good for you that tastes good. That's great. Mm. Good. Okay. So, I mean, so yeah. I discovered the cauliflower rice this week, which was insanely awesome. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Cauliflower rice is good. Yeah. Yeah. So just, yeah, just sauteing that. That's great. So yeah, it, it's, it's, it's just finding things that, you know, they're like substitutes almost um, right. for now, but eventually um, you, you may continue to eat the cauliflower rice forever. Um, but you may in a month or so, you may not even think about it. It may not be something you desire. Um, so it'll, it'll be interesting. So in a few weeks when we do another nutritional um, call like we're doing right now, I'm, I'm going to be asking you guys about if you feel your palate's changed because it takes two to four weeks for most people. And by then, um, you'll be able to see whether you're craving anything like that or not. Cool. Awesome. All right. A any other questions or you're all set? Yeah. Okay, cool. All right, guys. So I'm going to... Um, go through a new tri uh, one more roll call and then we're going to go into, I had a contest going on last week for uh, nutritional accountability, people checking in. So we do have a winner. I will announce who that is tonight. And then me and her will get off line and we will speak privately about setting up the time to do the dietary analysis and all of that. So I'm going to run through the list one more time. So if anything else came to mind, now is the time to ask. So Sheila, you're first on the list. Um, any questions or anything come to mind since uh, we last chimed in? Nope, I'm good. All right, awesome. Ba -ba -ba -ba. Okay, Michelle is up next. Uh, Michelle, any other questions before we got going? No, I'm good, thank you. All right, cool. All right. Lisa is next. Uh, Lisa, any, any other questions? I'm good, thanks for Okay, awesome. Uh, Rita, any other questions? Nope, I'm good. Awesome. Monica, we just spoke. I'm assuming nothing's popped up in the last 20 seconds. <laughs> no. All right, good. And then lastly, Jessica, work with me, mouse. 
Okay, Jessica, any, any questions come to mind since we last? Yeah, I'm just gonna ask one more. Um, yeah, sure. You mentioned um, alcohol. Mm -hmm. um, I am not a, a big drinker, but we do have a couple friends coming over Friday night. So mm. I'm trying to plan ahead. Um, if I even wanted to just have one, is, a, is beer the best? Vodka with seltzer, you know, it's just something, or, or like you said, even just seltzer, just stay away altogether. Like what, sure. I mean, because we're so, it's so early at this point, so I don't know if I should even go there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> sure, no, no, that's a good question. It's a very good question, and I think pretty much everyone in the group will be interested in hearing the answer. So there's three <laughs> types of alcohol. If you're going to drink alcohol that I recommend, two are hard liquor, one is wine. So the first, the best one to drink is tequila, um, believe it or not. It's made out of agave, it's not grain-based. Um, it tastes like gasoline for most people, but um, for some it's good. I would not recommend mixing it with orange juice or a lot of the sugary fruit juices. So if you're going to drink that, unfortunately, either dilute it with water or seltzer or have a shot. The thought just repulses me. Second, uh, there's gin. So my turn to is gin, believe it or not. I have a gin and seltzer, gin and club is what they would call it at a bar with a lime in it. Um, to me, that's most palatable out of um, the liquors. And when I go out, like I went out after my softball game last night after I got eaten alive by mosquitoes, and that's what I turned to. So that was number two on the list. That's made out of the juniper, which is an herb. And then lastly, I'd say a dry red wine. Um, there's actually a good brand you can order online. I think it's like one of those subscriptions, $40 a month or something called Dry Farms Wine. And it's all red wine. It's all dry wine. Apparently, it's really good. I had a client who lost 60 pounds. Um, she had just had a baby. She lost 60 pounds, and she had at least one glass of that a night. So okay. there are types of alcohol you can have, but those are the main three. So again, tequila, gin, dry red wine. For the tequila, stay away from the sugary juices and the mixes. And then right. from the gin, uh, I would mix it with some club soda. Don't do tonic. Tonic is very high in sugar. So uh, stay away from gin and tonics. Gin and club is a lot better. Okay, great. Cool. Any other questions? Oh, good. Uh, no, that's it. Thank you. All right. So everyone, we do have a winner for this, like I said. So the contest, which most of you did participate in, was most consistent group member with posting. And I also factored in scores because we almost had a tie, but there was somebody who weaked it out. They'll get a free private dietary analysis. It's basically a two or three page report where I will, I've synced up with most of you on my fitness pal, but I'm gonna look at what you've eaten over the last week and I'm going to give you a pretty detailed analysis as to any changes you'd make. And we'll also have a call to review. So the winner, Sheila. One. So Sheila, congrats. Thanks. You win. So, um, so awesome. we're going to sync up offline. I'll send you a private message on Facebook and uh, we'll sync up on my fitness pal. I'll go over the last week and hopefully we can get a call in today or uh, not today, uh, tomorrow or Friday um, okay. or at the very worst beginning of next week. But we'll review everything and we'll get you some personalized nutrition stuff going. Great. Thank you. Awesome. No problem. So guys, Thank you everyone for coming. Good night. I'm going to post this in the group. So if you missed anything, well, we missed the first few minutes, but if you missed anything um, after that, it will be in the group. So good night, everyone. And uh, we'll have this call again next week. We're going to talk about fitness next week. So that should be fun. All right, guys. Take care. All right. And